I went and, you know, tried to understand the things that would make me successful, not make excuses, not blame it on nobody else, not blame it on the system, not blame it on the fact that I was black, had nothing to do with it. It was all about me. I was my own worst enemy or I was my own success story. What's going on is Anton from AntonDaniels.com. I'm always excited to get out and about, especially during these times. And I'm happy to be back in town. You guys know I've been traveling a lot, so anytime I get to get out and spend time and explore my own city, it's always a plus. I'm here in downtown Detroit, like usual, hanging out with friends and, you know, good food, good times, good conversation. Anytime I'm around people that I really love being around, it's always a great opportunity to, you know, catch up and just do great things. And as I was walking through campus marshes, you know, I'm always inspired when I see the former CompuWare building. Now, considering that, you know, it's owned by rocket companies and Meridian Health and all of that, it's named something different, but I'll always remember it as the CompuWare building. For me growing up, it was always a big deal. Like CompuWare was something incredibly significant in my life because they had just built this gleaming new shiny building. It was a representation of the transition that the city was making and turning a new leaf. Growing up, I had always been obsessed with like New York and Manhattan and everything, Wall Street, downtown, tech companies, Silicon Valley, all that. So when CompuWare came, it was a big deal. It was such a big deal that I wanted to work there. Like I was obsessed with being a tech worker and working at CompuWare being a software engineer and coming in with my laptop, like that was just the dream for me. Fast forward a few years after I graduate to make a long story short, finally got my opportunity. So CompuWare gave me a call and was like, you know, we want you to come in for an interview, go through this interview process. Wound up being like three or four different interviews with different managers from all kinds of walks of life. So some of them were more techie, some of them were more human resource based. Some of them were more, you know, personality based to understand how you would fit in with certain teams. You know, the whole gamut of interviews for software engineers in order to make sure that you understand what you're talking about and that you fit in with the culture well. Well, I went through all of the interviews, like I passed the first interview. Oh, they're having a good time. So I passed the first interview and then I passed the second interview. I got through all of the interviews and I got down to like the last candidates in which they were selecting for you know, this particular job. And ultimately, you know, they decided against hiring me. When I had the conversations with the recruiter to find out exactly what it is that I did wrong, how it was I can improve, you know, trying to figure out how you can do things better and more effectively. Well, what she told me was they loved me. Every single manager loved me. They felt like I was great culturally. They felt like I had a good personality. My background supported my strong work ethic. I had great references. The reason why I didn't get selected, they didn't feel like I was strong enough from a technical perspective. That broke my heart, man. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Like, I was absolutely devastated because it was just like, I knew and I just truly felt in my heart that I was just stronger than everybody else, that I had a, a stronger work ethic and whatever I didn't know, the thing about software engineering is, is finding answers. It's not just entirely being traditionally trained and then that being the extent of the job itself is continuously growing and trying to find out exactly what it is that you need to do in, in order to solve a particular problem. And I was just better than everybody else. Like not only was I well versed because I was trained obviously in a college setting like everybody else there, but I was self-taught also. Like I lived, worked, played, and slept in code and software engineering and design. I was bothered, but I wasn't angry. You see what I'm saying? Like I understood that they had to pick somebody. And as a company, it was their responsibility to pick who they felt were the best candidates for the job. But I was bothered by the idea that no matter how I spun it, somebody was better than me. Somebody was picked over me. And that competitive thing within me, that competitive spirit, it just kicks in, you know what I'm saying? You wanna win, at least I do. I wanna win in everything I do. I wanna be loved, I wanna be supported. You know what I'm saying? I want people to revere me as a result of the things that I contribute and do. I didn't get that opportunity. 
And I didn't blame it on nobody. It wasn't anybody's fault but mine. Like I had a responsibility to show and display that I was better than the other candidates. And I didn't. And I use that as motivation though. That's the message. Like it was a revelation because I wanted this thing so bad and I just couldn't get it. And so now I didn't go back and rest on my laurels. I didn't allow that to defeat me. I went back and I hustled and I, and I proved myself and I showed myself worthy. Well, here's the kicker. The first thing that I needed to do and my first objective was to get the opportunity and then to make the person look so good that gave me the opportunity that they got promoted and they got heralded for being able to identify that diamond in the rough. Because I was rough around the edges a little bit, right? And that's okay because, like I said, I was willing to work, I was willing to learn, I was willing to humble myself. I went, I went and got me a mentor. Like I went and, you know, tried to understand the things that would make me successful. Not make excuses, not blame it on nobody else, not blame it on the system, not blame it on the fact that I was black. Had nothing to do with it. It was all about me. I was my own worst enemy or I was my own success story. I made my manager look great. And to this day, we still have a phenomenal relationship. Next step, work my way all the way up to the top. And eventually I worked myself in a position where I had offers for becoming a vice president of user experience at different tech companies and different really large companies. And eventually I accepted one of those positions and I excelled at that also. The feather in my cap came when CompuWare eventually came back calling because it wasn't enough for me to just be successful. It wasn't enough for me to just get the job. It wasn't enough for me to just excel and make a lot of money and you know get into the tech world and all that other type of stuff. And they start recruiting me for an executive level job. And I went through it and they made me an offer and they couldn't afford me. Like, I would have took the job if I felt like the culture was right and everything else. It was more of an interview from my perspective. I was interviewing them for the position. It wasn't whether or not they wanted me. It was whether or not I was interested in what it is that they had to offer. They couldn't afford me. They couldn't make me a big enough offer that would force me to get uncomfortable and lead a position I was at. And shortly after, I moved the goalposts. Listen, fam. We live in an interesting times. I can't sit here and tell you that I know exactly what the landscape is gonna look like over the next two years. My prediction personally is that things won't get back to normal until two or three years from now. It's a lot of uncertainty in the air. People don't know exactly what's going on. And it's a lot of people that, despite what you see on social media, they're not doing well. They're getting a lot of no's. They don't know exactly what's gonna happen next. I feel your pain. I know exactly what you're going through. This is a dude that's telling you, I know what no's look like. And I'm talking about a lot of no's. I know what no's feel like when everybody is dependent on you and you gotta make it happen. I'm sharing this part of my life with you in this story because I want you to understand that every no is a blessing. It's an opportunity for you to be that much more motivated to go and get it, to grind, to get on the other side of that fence and know what happiness truly feels like because you won, you've gotten that feather in your cap and now you can move the goalposts because it ain't over for me now. Like now I'm even more hungry. Like I'm more on my grind. I'm ready for the next big thing, man. Like I'm really, really hustling and working and grinding harder, I believe than I ever have in my life. Some people that know me and that seen me in the basement and that, that, that was around me during that really, really hard time and when I was really grinding, they'll probably tell you otherwise. But I'm telling you, opportunity is all around you. It's there, man. You just got to see it. You got to change your perspective. You got to get out of this victimization mentality. And you got to grind, bro. Ain't no time for sore losers. Ain't no time for that victim mentality. Ain't no time for the blame game. It's all on you, bro. You determine your future. I only share these intimate details in my life because I love y'all. I take these same principles and philosophies and I'm applying them to everything as it relates to my life, whether it be relationships, finances, fitness. I've been grinding in the gym, yo. Let's turn the corner and I don't see nothing but opportunity in front of me. Uncertainty for some people is opportunity for others. It just depends on what side of the fence you are and how you look at things, your mindset. I don't wanna hold y'all too much longer because I definitely wanna finish enjoying my day. 
Holler me at AntonDaniels.com. You know, I respond to everything. I holler at y'all. I love y'all. Peace.